Hey y'all, it's Laura and I'm back with another Bello Boulevard video. This one is a grid layout with five photos, still using the Spell on You collection, which is a fantastic Halloween collection. Now this layout has some more pumpkin photos. If you saw my last one with this collection, it was pumpkin carving. And this is the kids actually doing the decorating and cutting out of the pumpkin. And so I thought we're gonna have a kind of related layout so these two will go side by side in my album like a two-page spread but i don't generally do continuous two-page spreads i do them as two separate layouts that are related uh, usually with the same collection the same colors and just a different design so they kind of coordinate rather than have a continuous left to right design one of the reasons that I do this is because I use the D-ring album, so they have the great big rings in between, so they are not going to sit right next to each other anyway. They're going to have a nice big gap in between, and so it seems kind of silly to me uh, to put in all of the effort to make a continuous two-page layout that's not going to be seen as continuous in the album anyway. And so I choose to do it this way instead. I also get a little overwhelmed by two-page layouts sometimes. Uh, it's just a lot of space. 12 by 24 is a lot of space. And I don't think that way. <laughs> I've been doing square layouts for so long that my brain thinks in this size. And so it's just a bit tricky for me to, to switch back to a two-pager uh, all at once. Now, this layout does have a slightly different look to it. Like I said, I do have a tendency to kind of mix it up a little bit and just use similar patterns or similar colors and make the two coordinate rather than match. And I'm doing that here. So in the last layout, I had a black background on some white cardstock. The white cardstock was the frame. This time I'm switching it up. We have the black cardstock as the frame and then the white cardstock in the middle. I've also added a frame of this beautiful striped paper that has all of the colors in the collection in it and that way I can easily incorporate all of those colors because my photos don't really have a ton of colors in them. They have some, sure, uh, but they don't have all of the colors from the collection in there and adding this border helps me bring in those colors, introduce those colors in a way that I can then use them on the layout and it makes sense. So these are my five photos. They are three by two photos, which may sound small, and it is small, but I think you can still pretty clearly see everybody's face, everybody, what they're doing, what they're wearing, and that's okay to me. I have come a long way in photo sizes. <laughs> there was a time that I did not think I could ever scrap something smaller than three by four, and after playing around with two by threes for a while and even two by twos, I actually really enjoy them. I think they're a lot of fun. I think it's a great way to get a lot of photos onto a layout and still have some room to play. And so that's why I really, really enjoy them. But I don't do them super often. I don't do smaller photos every time. I tend to stick to three by fours for the most part, occasionally four by sixes. But uh, I don't know, two by threes are fun to just kind of mix it up a little bit. So I've backed all of my photos with this bright orange paper. I'm sorry my camera is shaking so much. Uh, part of the reason for that is because I have moved my table in my craft room and I have not yet stabilized it and I didn't realize that it was going to shake so much. So hopefully that doesn't continue, but it is going to be a little shaky because I am a very active person person. I tend to move around quite a lot when I'm scrapbooking and sometimes the table does move. And so hopefully it doesn't do it too bad, but it was it was annoying while I was scrapping. So I need to figure out how to stabilize it where it's at. It's currently in the middle of the room is what I'm trying to say. Instead of having it braced against a wall like I had previously or braced against a, I think I had a bookshelf in front of it that was bracing it. And now it is in the center of the room. And so it does not have said bookshelf to brace it. I need to figure out another option. So I'm cutting into this acetate. So this is also from Bella Boulevard and I believe it's called Black Chevys. I think so, Chevrons, yes. And so this is going to be the base for my grid layout. And these are cut to, three, I think they were three and a half by two and a half. And I'm just gonna tape them right down the middle because I know that part's gonna be covered. Now I know that there is some sort of acetate friendly tape in the world that exists. I've never used it. I've always just used regular tape or staples 
to attach my acetate and not really worried about it, just cover it up. Now, if I was not going to cover the center of these rectangles, I would probably add tape on the side. So just whatever side was gonna be covered. As long as it stays attached to the background, doesn't really matter terribly much. And I just make sure to cover up that little bit of uh, where the tape shows. Not that you can see it in a big way, but you can see a little bit of it. And I know I'm gonna cover it up, so I'm not too worried about it, but yeah, I really like acetate. If you have a preferred method for adhering acetate, other than double-sided tape, let me know in the comments below. I would be curious to know how you adhere your acetate because every time I use acetate, I kind of go through the same thing in my head of, oh, I wish you wouldn't couldn't see the adhesive. <laughs> <laughs> and even if I use my stapler, I mean, then you can see the staples, which is fine uh, most of the time. But, you know, I mean, there's, there are times that I think, oh, I wish you couldn't see that. But uh, what are you going to do? It's, it's clear. That's kind of the point of acetate. So this border strip I've added in the center is cut from the border strip sheet, like so the pattern paper that is in this collection, Spell on You. And I really really like this border strip paper. It had some really fun sayings on it. And one of them was really cute about pumpkins, about jack-o'-lanterns. And so I thought I will cut this in half and I will layer it in the center of my grid because the other side of this layout has a great big October cut file title. So it doesn't need a giant title on this side of the page. I'm going to go with something a bit more subtle and subtitle feeling and then I'll add my journaling on this page. There was no journaling on the other page. I'm putting the journaling on this page. Just talking about what the kids were doing and how they were keeping this tradition alive and keeping it fun. Now, carving pumpkins is Charlie's activity. There's uh, certain activities in the house that the kids really care about. And so I have a tendency to encourage them to take a leadership role in making sure those activities happen. And sometimes it's just helping me remember to buy the things <laughs> for it. It's like um, egg coloring, right? Coloring the, dyeing the eggs at Easter time. That is a Joseph activity. He really enjoys that one. And so he helps me remember to buy the egg dye and the eggs. So this pumpkin carving activity is one of Charlie's favorite traditions. And so I relied on Charlie to help me remember to buy the pumpkins and to make sure that we set aside some time to do this. And it's also really important, I find, to go ahead and do it earlier in the month because if we wait too long to do the pumpkins, either the store runs out of pumpkins because obviously they're not that's not something they keep in stock year round, uh, or... <laughs> Or we just forget and we have the pumpkins and we don't actually carve them. So I find if we go ahead and tackle it early in the month, then we have much more success with it actually getting accomplished. And the kids do really enjoy it. It's just taking the time to say, okay, we're going to sit down and carve these pumpkins today. That's what we're going to do for today. And so Charlie and I sat down and figured out a good day to set that up and went ahead and did it. We did it last weekend. So they had a great time with it. I'm just playing around with the icon ephemera at the moment, and I knew I wanted to include a lot of these cute little whimsical pieces, and I think these are great for layouts where you have your kids involved or your grandkids involved. I think this is a good opportunity to bring in these kind of fun, silly elements, and they don't all have to perfectly match the theme. So for example, we're pumpkin carving, but I've pulled in some really cute little things like some clouds and some owls and a cat that is more maybe costume feeling or party feeling. And we have these cute little bottles that have things like witch's brew and things like that on there. And I don't know if that's what it says. I can't actually read it from here. <laughs> I might be making that up, <laughs> just so you know. And I'm just playing around with these little bits and pieces. And you know what? They don't have to perfectly match the photos. They can just be in theme. They don't have to be all pumpkin carving specific. They can be Halloween generic. That works. And I really think it adds a lot of fun to this layout. Like this layout ended up coming out so whimsical and so fun and just so colorful 
which quite often Halloween layouts, that's not the case. They usually just have the oranges and the greens and occasionally purple, but definitely black. And sometimes that makes a lot of your layouts kind of feel the same year to year because you're just using this very limited color palette. But I love the fact that Bella Boulevard did a really open color palette. It's got those yellows, it's got teals and purples and just blues. And I really, really like that incorporation of more photos, I'm sorry, of more colors in their collection. It makes it so much easier to use, especially because my kids are never wearing the same colors. <laughs> we have had, I think, one year where out of the blue, all of their costumes ended up being black. And I remember scrapbooking that photo and thinking, wow, <laughs> this group picture of all of my children dressed almost entirely in black is really, really boring. <laughs> And I believe I went out of my way to make that layout extremely colorful to offset the fact that every single one of them was wearing near solid black. <laughs> and it was just so funny to me that we had somehow managed to agree to costumes that just ended up that way. And uh, when you put it all together and we sat and took a picture, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's nothing really standing out in this photo at all. <laughs> and it can be so tricky. And I don't know if any of you have kids or grandkids that have gone through a kind of dark clothes phase, whether it's full goth or whether it's honestly just they like the color black or blue and they wear a lot of dark colors for a while. My kids, my older two kids in specific have gone through this phase and it, I find it really frustrating when it comes to scrapbooking. Now, when it comes to what they're wearing in real life and all of that, I don't, I honestly don't care what color they wear. That doesn't matter to me at all. But then when I go to sit down and scrap photos I've taken of them and the only thing I've got to work with is black, <laughs> I use it as a license to use whatever colors I want. <laughs> If you are going to wear only neutrals, you are going to get a colorful page. And my kids find that quite funny. But I honestly do find it a little bit frustrating to not have any color palette to work with at all at the beginning. It can sometimes befuddle me at first until I just decide, no, nah, I'm doing what I want. <laughs> Now, I am creating a little journaling spot here. This was just simply using a piece of white cardstock and a little bit more of that orange that I used to back the photos to create a similarly sized journaling spot to my photos. It's roughly three by two, and I'm adding journaling lines with my T-square ruler. These are not expensive. It's super cheap, and I find it to be the fastest and easiest way to make journaling lines anywhere you want. And it works really great to line it up with the side of your page. That way, your lines are at least mostly straight. Uh, unless, of course, you're me and keep turning things <laughs> as you go. And then you get slightly wonky lines, but they're straighter than if I tried to draw them without <laughs> the ruler. This fun little puffy sticker set is just giving me so much life in this collection. I am enjoying the tar out of this thing. It is so fun. There's so many tiny, tiny little pieces, and I love that. So I'm using some of the little circles as my scattering bits around my clusters, and then I'm also pulling off some of the stars. I believe there were some circles that had stars in them as well, and some actual like star shapes and adding those on around my clusters. The detail on this particular layout was so much fun to do. I really enjoy doing detail work anyway in my creative processes, but playing with all of the little enamel shapes and all the little puffy shapes and even some of the little accessory stickers that are really, really small. I really enjoy those. They're just so fun to add those teeny, teeny, tiny little details around the outside of my clusters. Now, there were some of these cluster pieces that were actually larger pieces. So underneath of the gray cloud, the bottom right corner, uh, that I had put a section of Icon Ephemera that had a bunch of stars and little tiny shapes in there. And I decided to fussy cut out all those tiny little shapes and then glue them down because I didn't really want that big, thick white outline. And so if you find that that thick white outline gives it almost too much of a cartoonish look for you, cut it off, trim it down. Sometimes just a very thin white outline will give it more of a realistic look and kind of change the overall 
feel of the layout. And I really enjoy that. I did that on all of the icon ephemera I put on here. I trimmed down that thick white border quite a bit to like a thin white border. And I really liked that change. Now finishing up with some splattering, I did not need to use my Heidi Swap Color Shine, which is in very short supply at the moment, and just stuck with the Nouveau because honestly, there's not a lot of white space left on this layout, and I thought it would be too tricky to try to get it around all of my clusters without getting it onto all of my photos. So I didn't try, and I think it came out pretty cute. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Until next time. Bye, y'all.